Foreign investments are leaving China in haste. Western companies doing business in China are facing pressures that were unimaginable several years ago. The country's economy is floundering, and its relationship with the United States is strained. Three years of border restrictions and an effective commercial lockdown have opened cracks that have yet to heal. A worsening economic outlook has added to companies' concerns, making it harder to justify investing more money in the country. Half of the $250 billion to $300 billion foreign bond investments since 2019 have exited, and U.S. private equity and venture capital investments in China have fallen by more than 50 percent, according to a J.P. Morgan report in September 2023. Foreign direct investment into China in the second quarter of this year reached a 25-year low at $4.9 billion, with a year-on-year -year decline of 87 percent, according to Chinese official data. Bloomberg and FDI Markets data on new investment projects, a more telling indicator of whether foreign firms are still investing in the country, show a 40% drop to $74 billion in 2020 from $120 billion in 2019 and an additional 45% decline to $41 billion in 2022, the lowest since 2010. Although financial transactions are easy to track without much lag, it may take years for foreign direct investment data to reflect Western firms diversifying away from China. For this reason, Beijing might be unaware of how bad things really are as far as foreign direct investment, analysts of the Rhodium Group, a leading research firm on the Chinese economy, warned in a recent report. Amidst a broader structural slowdown in China's economy, the delayed reactions could contribute to further losses in productivity and economic growth, the report stated. More than one-third of U.S. businesses have reduced or paused planned investment in China in the past year, according to the 2023 survey of the U.S. China Business Council. Their top concerns are geopolitics and domestic policies. On October 3rd, CapVision Partners, one of the U.S. firms rated earlier this year, announced that it had completed a rectification approved by Chinese authorities. The company repeated the CCP's diktats and vowed to take the lead in safeguarding the security bottom line in the consulting industry and contribute a small share to the Chinese-style modernization. Shortly after the raid, Chinese propaganda claimed that CapVision's consultants engaged in international espionage. Some other foreign companies were rated this year as well. Mintz Group's Beijing office was rated in March, Bain and Company S Shanghai office in April. In addition to raids, Western executives have reportedly been barred from leaving China. According to Spain-based human rights group Safeguard Defenders, China now has 15 different exit ban laws that allow authorities to stop a person from leaving the country. Exit bans can last from several months to years, and there's no formal notification of when it gets lifted. People under a ban have to use their personal networks to find out the real reason for it and try to leave the country to see whether it's still in effect. Earlier this year, the regime drastically expanded its 2014 anti-espionage law, giving authorities sweeping powers to probe anything deemed by the party as affecting national security. The Foundation for Defense of Democracies think tank group stated in a report in September, Beijing is re-engineering conditions for foreign businesses with a raft of new laws and regulations that seek to bend investors to the ruling party's priorities and render overseas regulators irrelevant. When U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo visited China in August, she warned that the country could become uninvestable if the unpredictable official behavior, such as raids on U.S. firms, don't cease. Foreign companies are shifting investments and their Asian headquarters out of China as confidence plunges following the expansion of an anti-spying law, rising labor costs in China, supply chain disruptions, the fluctuations in the value of the Chinese yuan and other challenges. Companies are uneasy about security controls, government protection of their Chinese rivals, and a lack of action on reform promises. The European Chamber noted it wasn't just foreign companies that are moving, two out of five in its survey reported Chinese customers or suppliers are shifting investments out of the country as well. Here are some countries that are becoming popular destinations for companies that are moving manufacturing out of China. Nike has said that it is considering moving some of its manufacturing out of China to Southeast Asia to improve quality and reduce costs. Dell has announced that it will be moving some of its manufacturing out of China to Vietnam and Mexico to reduce costs and improve efficiency. 
Apple has already moved some iPhone manufacturing to India and Vietnam and is planning to move some of its MacBook production to the Southeast Asian nation. Mexico is shaping up to be a prime location for Chinese manufacturers to relocate, particularly since the US is a key consuming market. Chinese companies exporting out of Mexico to the US would also be able to lower freight rates due to increases in energy prices and skirt high US tariffs slapped on some products from China. Thailand is stepping up to replace China as a manufacturing hub. It has a skilled workforce, a strong infrastructure, and a strategic location in Southeast Asia. In the European Chamber survey, Malaysia was the second top destination for companies moving their Asian headquarters out of China, with 43% of companies that moved. South Asian countries like India and Bangladesh are prime candidates for Chinese manufacturers to move to, thanks to their vast lands and young populations. In the European Chamber survey, Singapore was the top destination for companies moving their Asian headquarters out of China, with 43% of companies that moved. After fueling China's growth for decades, foreign businesses are now pulling out, as its political and business landscapes shift. This exodus could exacerbate the fragility of its economy, posing a significant threat to China's social and economic stability and potentially challenging the ruling power of the Chinese Communist Party. That concludes this episode. If you like China Watch, please subscribe it and stay tuned. Thank you, everyone.